Hi everyone, welcome to PrePG's interview series. We here we interview people who have worked hard and have been very successful uh, in in tests and who's performed well. And our idea of good performance is not just doing well in tests, but doing improving a lot over time. Uh, and we have with us Dr. Kavya, uh, who has really improved a lot and has done very well in INICET in the recent INICET. Uh, so, Dr. Kavya, why don't you start by introducing yourself? Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Kavya from uh, Bangalore Medical College. I have secured a rank of 184 in the recently conducted INICET. Great, great. And uh, there's also more good news to share. Why, why don't you share that too? Yeah, I got a seat of uh, MS Ophthal in Ames, New Delhi. That's excellent. Congratulations. It must Thank feel, I, when I talked with you earlier, it's, it's, it was like your dream seat so um really congratulations for that tell me how you felt and uh, when you got the rank got the seat yeah the i didn't expect to get such a good rank and after getting the rank also i didn't ex expect a seat in ames new delhi because it's it's really far-fetched for <laughs> so many people so i was thinking some peripheral aims some branch so this is really unexpected Great, great. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, when I was looking through your stats, uh, you have worked really hard. So I'm not surprised. Maybe you are surprised. I'm not surprised that you did well. And I uh, saw your performance improve too. So tell me about uh, the performance improvement. Okay. Is, this the, is this the first test you were taking or have you taken others before this? No, the thing is, uh, I gave the last year uh, NEET uh, PG uh, with my internship, so I was not able to prepare much for that. So my rank was 37,000 in that. So from that to improve all this, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was a hard journey, but it kind of fell through, like it kind of happened. <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, getting, getting that uh, 37,000 rank without much mm. preparation is already uh, a pretty good performance, I would say. And it's not, mm. you know, there are uh, what the number of people who took the test last year was close to 160,000. Yeah. Uh, and getting to the top, uh, you know, 40,000 out of that without much preparation is, is not bad at all. But yeah. the improvement really matters, right? Like it's uh, getting getting to the top 200 ranks is great. Yeah. Um, I would love to hear about uh, your preparation journey. How did you start? Like, when did you start? Uh, and you can start even before internship or like even during your medical college time. Uh, were you thinking about e examinations or these PG entrance examinations? Yeah, the thing is, I was not really serious about entrance examination till after my internship. Like in my internship also, I used to give like maybe one or two tests in the whole year. I didn't have much time for anything. But once I got the rank of 37,000 and I, when I realized like a lot of uh, people from my batch had actually got some rank within 200 that I realized that I've been putting very little effort for this and I need to, you know, up my game. So after that, uh, I think uh, getting such a bad rank was a really good boost for me that I need to put a lot of efforts if I need to get any kind of seat. So I, I, my graduation was over by some February 18th or something. And after that, I started preparing on my own till uh, I uh, joined some coaching classes, which uh, started on April. So till then I was preparing on my own. I used pre-PG as my main um, question bank during that time because uh, till one and a half month, I was thinking I'll do around maybe five to eight K questions so that I'll get a gross idea about what the examiners are actually asking from particular subject. So when I, when the classes are going on, I know what topic to focus on. So I think this is kind of important because when medicine is such a vast subject, you need to figure out what are the topics that are examiners favorite and you need to focus on such uh, core topics. So that helped me a lot because I had prepared for the class, uh, it was a good boost for my preparation. That's that's great. So you said you took some coaching classes too. Which coaching was that? Uh, Bhatia. Yeah. Okay, great, great. Uh, hearing quite a few people who take Bhatia. Uh, I was talking to someone else who was also from Bangalore and took Bhatia. Um, 
Great. So, and uh, there are uh, there are actually some some of the Bhatia coaching places that actually ask their users to uh, the, the doctors who use them to use PPG. Yes. Um, you, you might have seen the logos come up on the app. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's you know uh, classroom coaching is important, but practice is important too in these things. Um, what when did you uh, you you said you started doing a a more deeper practice mm -hmm. around March, April time frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, t t tell me more about that. Uh, so like uh, my strategy was I already had some notes from before. Uh, so I had all the sub subject wise notes. So this time Does I you note your own notes or did yeah, somebody my else? Because third year and final year I attended Bhatia coaching, which and I had the notes from that, but uh, I had not really revised those notes. So I actually took the time to read through the notes. So one and a half month, I was able to complete around 14 subjects. Uh, and then uh, during that time, I was doing a lot of questions from pre-PG. Like I used to do the daily test as well as the topic wise questions so that I get a gross idea about what, uh, what topics to focus on, what I have to read throughout the year. So that gave me the baseline to work on. That's that's great. And mm -hmm. you said that you completed close to 14 subjects in that one and a half month time frame. What yeah. was your subject wise strategy? Like which subjects did you start with? Uh, I sh started with the short subjects because uh, it takes a little time and you have the feeling that I have completed so many subjects. It gives so, you a boost, a confidence yeah, boost, right? Yeah, so. I kept the long subjects towards the end. I, uh, first years and all, I was not familiar with. I started with the short subjects, especially from the final year, which would be easy for me to do because I have seen that clinically also. So I did that. I did a little bit of third year subjects. And then the thing is, foundation batch notes were very concise. So I was able to do it in a day or two. And then it was not like I was uh, really doing the subject. I was I just needed a general idea to work on. So I did that. And then once the classes started in April, I went according to the subject. I used to give the daily test so that I kept in touch with the other subjects also. So that was a very important part of my preparation because, you know, once you once you're doing a subject for a week, you should not lose touch of the other subjects. Like you need to have a constant revision kind of thing so exactly. that then it will not be a, like a burden for you that you have to do 19 subjects in one and a half months. So you will you are almost done with 80% of the preparation if you are doing the strategy. That's great. That's great. So, you know, th this part about uh, being connected to all other subjects at the same time, is not a very common thing you will notice. Like, you know, there are people usually stick to one subject and they practice that subject at a time. They have dedicated some time for revision at the end where they'll revise one subject at a time. Um, what did you, and besides this, this whole thing of taking uh, pre-PG daily tests mm -hmm. and practicing topics and mm -hmm. uh, doing uh, the Bhatia classes, mm -hmm. what, uh, did you do any form of a regular revision too? Yeah, the thing is, uh, see, when once the subject is over, so I used to read the notes on the same day, do the questions, uh, uh, give the da daily test as usual, do the questions from that subject from some kind of review book, uh, do it from some other app, that subject. And then along with that, if I find something, I used to do something called as lateral reading. So like when I find something in pathology, some topic, which I know that it's from medicine, I just open the book and see it. So I, I know that, OK, I have read it somewhere, even if it's in UG, PG, anywhere. I, if I am not clear about that topic, I just go through that topic from different subjects. So I always keep it connected, like throughout my preparation, I used to do that. I think that helped me a lot. That makes sense. And I, I it's, it's a very pragmatic strategy to do that. Um, now, when you uh, when you were as you were taking the test, uh, mm -hmm. did you feel that the pre PG what you felt what you practiced in pre PG was close enough to what you actually saw in the test? Yeah, uh, I think uh, some of the apps, uh, the difficulty level of the questions is very, very hard. So these uh, pre PG is actually based on the previous paper. So there are a lot of better chances that the same kind of questions get repeated. And then I think more than memorizing the subject, it's better to have a good approach to the question and that will take you a better places because it's not the knowledge that is important, understanding the language of the examiner, the options, the way they frame it. I think that you have to develop that kind of approach to, you know, 
get success in any kind of exam and then you can only get that through doing a lot of questions from any source that is you can possibly get yes so uh, you know there's um you, you mentioned something that understanding the psyche of the examiner right like how are they framing the questions yeah uh, one of the things that pre pg has done the reason we pick up previous years question papers and we put them there mm-hmm. is because these professors remain the same you know there are the professors who are framing the questions mm-hmm. they are not changing too much <laughs> you know and they are all even if uh, some of them are getting older the other uh, new generation is taking up but they are all uh, birds of a feather right mm-hmm. um, and they have similar ways of framing questions uh, mm-hmm. and uh, you know you must have in your medicine time also done that when you mm-hmm. prepare for an exam you end up saying like okay who is the one who's preparing the test and yeah. go and see previous questions like that's yeah. just a logical thing to do right uh, yeah. and uh, these are they are very smart people and they frame questions in a way that they will give you confusing options So it's not just the right answer that matters it's also mm-hmm. the wrong options eliminating options and all of those things mm-hmm. uh, so so great it's and, and that's the reason why ppg has so many questions mm-hmm. uh, by the way i was looking at your stats and mm-hmm. the total amount of time you have spent on uh, like you know total number of hours you spent on the app is over on ppg is over 600 hours so yeah. you've really practiced a lot <laughs> yeah uh, you know so, practice yeah. is the key yeah more than that i think uh, when you understand the psyche of the examiner you will know how to eliminate the option and thankfully it's going towards a clinical kind of question paper which is actually a blessing in disguise because you know you can eliminate a lot of options if your concepts are right and you know how to approach the question because i think a lot of questions have answers in the question itself because uh, you know some of the options are actually you know opposite to each other if you are able to pick that up you no know, you can eliminate two options and then among the two you no know, it's a 50 50% chance and it's a good chance to to take oh okay so on that point let's you know this is this is a new thing that i've not talked as much with with people i would love to hear your in general your option eliminating elimination strategy like yeah. uh, like how did you think about it in the exam before that tell me how many questions did you attempt in inicet 199 oh that's great so you said so you you truly put that method like you you must have come to an end and saying like there's a high probability one of these two is right like stuff yeah. like that. okay tell me about your your option elimination strategy uh actually uh, i i attempt a lot of questions in any given exam because you know my memory is is like it's finite thing uh, i i don't know if i know something about the topic i'll attempt that question because you know i i find that stats only always works in my favor even in the gts and all of that if, if i know something about the topic and if i'm able to eliminate at least one option and the thing is i, I don't think that you need to remember everything when you read a topic you have to know okay i know this i have read this in this part of the book i know this about this topic and then with that concept only you will be able to eliminate at least one or two options and then i think uh, i think that much surety is the only only people have finite memory so it will always work in your favor that's that's excellent yeah and you know your probability increase inicet is plus 1 minus 1/3 uh, right so uh, for all practical purposes it sums up to zero while yeah. uh, in 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 uh, in neat pg if you have uh, like a plus 1 minus quarter uh, mm. then uh, <laughs> there is a probability that you'll actually gain by yeah. guessing but here if you eliminate even one option there is a chance you'll gain on an average so so that's that's also a pretty good strategy yeah. um i also wanted to ask you you mentioned earlier that uh, having a lot of questions is very yeah. important as mm. opposed to having just a few questions yeah. and the reason i'm asking you that is just because you know many uh, doctors come to me and they say that how am i going to do 90000 questions on pre pg now pre pg has got a big corpus we've actually got 200000 questions out of that we narrow it down based on like you know we eliminate similar questions and we narrow it down uh, to uh, from previous years around 60000 and now we have put another close to 20000 clinical questions because that's becoming more and more important uh, 
tell us more about that right like why is the quantity so important the thing is you don't really know what's the language of the examiner or the question because you know you, nobody is getting the real paper whatever they are framing is from what the students have told after coming out of the examination hall so when you are doing it from different resources like review book one app different app you get different language of the same question so you know so you understand okay the examiner is interested in this topic because i have seen this question from so many different sources so you know that that particular topic is important. important i mean if you get to a range of maybe getting 75% of the question right i think you are in a very good space because you already know which are the good top uh, which are the topics which are getting repeated what is the you are able to understand the you know the pitfalls on the question you know, why they are saying accept or no or same thing you are able to con uh, correct the you know silly mistakes that that, uh, that you are doing because i was doing it really fast this pre pg gave me this thing that okay uh, you are doing it really fast you should probably slow down because 30 minute 60 mark i was doing it like maybe 15 minutes 20 minutes i i had to slow down so that i should um, i had to reduce my silly mistakes but uh, by the time i finished maybe 3000 to 5000 questions per subject my silly mistakes uh, reduced drastically so cool. you know and then your time management improves your silly mistakes improve i think you can only get all of that by doing a lot of questions on every topic great great and that's i'm so glad you're saying that because i try to drill that down with every doctor i talk to mm -hmm. and uh, at, at at the same time like if you get something wrong go and look into why right like answer that in your mind then uh, we we repeat the mistakes that you have made in the past whenever somebody comes and tells me uh, i'm i'm getting too many repeats i tell them you're making a lot lot of mistakes <laughs> that's why you're getting a lot of repeats on pre pg yeah. uh, so we drill that down on people's minds the app mm -hmm. is an adaptive practice which takes care of that great so thanks for all you know giving that o overview i just wanted to switch gears and i wanted to also ask you about you know what one of the things that happens with all of us and especially during this preparation for very hard examinations like uh, like INICET uh, or NEET PG or next or any of these things is that every once in a while you start doubting yourself right yeah. and i talk to so many one of the top things that comes from doctors is that they start mm -hmm. doubting themselves they mm -hmm. lose time all of those things so did you ever go through that yourself Yeah I think uh, it's part of uh, take, uh, being an MBBS doctor because you know it's it's a struggle through and through throughout the 5 years and then the thing is what uh, what keeps you going is that despite your personal problems whatever is in your head you are going through depression whatever it is I think you know you have to set a goal that I study 10 to 12 hours a day and you have to get get through that like whatever happens no you have to put an a particular amount of uh, hours a day and then uh, and then uh, even if you are depressed i think this is you have to convince yourself that this is not the end of the world and i mean when i was going through the preparation phase i was like okay if i get the 30000 rank again i'll take a diploma in an institution i'll do a fellowship in pain management or something like that i know there are always a lot of options open for you so it, even if you don't get through it's not the end of the world i don't know convincing myself that actually gave me a lot of hope and then it uh, kept me from being really afraid of the exam even if the exam was tomorrow i was like okay even if i get md pharmacology it's an interesting subject i can get into research or something <laughs> something like that i kept saying myself that and then you know uh, whatever you are you are deserving of you will actually get it and if you have put the effort it will come back to you so that's great that's the, the, so keeping a positive attitude is yeah. is such a such a big thing right like because you are must have gone into the examination feeling calm yeah right yeah uh, how, how did you how did you feel once you came out of the exam exam uh, hall actually i was really happy because uh, uh, it was like uh, the topics and all were known and i kind of felt like okay i know this topic i was able to attempt whatever maximum i could do i was actually happy with my performance it was not like i didn't know anything i don't know where this topic is coming from it was nothing like that so i was pretty positive about that and i actually told my mom uh, i might get something around within 200 rank i actually told my mom that oh, that's so. great that's great <laughs> yeah that was a pretty good predictor yeah um, great great so uh, tell us more like i i would i would love to hear from you if you were to advise people mm -hmm. on their how they should start the preparation journey like they might be you know around this time there are so many people and 
in your shoes last year right yeah. even though the exams not happened this time is happening mm-hmm. like sometime in march so yeah. uh, but there are many people who will be in your shoes at this stage who are starting their journey what should yeah. they be doing uh yeah i think uh, it's important to keep your motivation going because i feel like so many of my friends are asking me what i'm doing i the thing is i think it's important to find your positives and negatives because i knew that my memory was not that great so i worked on my approach to the questions and then i was like okay, okay if i see this question what i should do i worked on my own strategy if my strategy will not work on somebody else but then i think you know you have to figure out your own weaknesses and work on them and then uh, for uh, my memory i used a lot of things like something called uh, repeated revisions and uh, sticking things in the wall and repeatedly revising things which i constantly forgot and doing questions you know you have to change approach based on the individual's weaknesses and strengths and more than that uh, i think uh, fixing an hour that i study 10 to 12 hours a day is important and then i think more than memorizing stuff and doing a lot of uh, revisions on the notes is important to do a lot of questions uh, give a lot of gts and review it properly uh, when i say review it properly i don't mean to say that you need to e- read half a page explanation which you are not going to remember i knew that i'm not going to remember that explanation so i used to you see the question why i'm making a mistake i used to open my notebook and see okay this is in my notebook i'm getting this wrong because of this and i used to read at least only one or two sentences in that explanation which is enough for me so you know you have to you know uh, individualize it and right. make your own strategy and whatever happens keep it keep going like you have to do 10 to 12 hours a day you have to make sacrifices but it's also important to take breaks like at least watch something talk to your parents talk to your friends i don't know i think you have to keep yourself human <laughs> <laughs> right that's that, that's great and you know uh, what i'm hearing from you kavya throughout this thing is a very practical way of approaching to it yeah. and uh, another thing that i'm hearing from you which is very important is that we are all different people and what works for one will not work for the other uh, the important thing is to recognize your strengths and weaknesses and mold the preparation to take care of the weaknesses in particular right yeah. and we always say that about weaknesses and topics or weakness like start with your weaknesses because unlike life where you double down on your strengths these exams are a way to capture your weakness and kick you out right like they are because they will if a topic is weak it's not like you don't choose it it's going to just appear in the examination yeah. um, by the way when you started your what was did you ex- observe the color of your prep dna when you started and see it changing over time yeah i i think i used a little bit in my uh, internship so it was around 50 or something my pr- readiness level so by the time it was june or something it jumped to 71 or something and then from that it was really hard to move even one one uh, level so like i think by november it was around 92 so it was uh, so actually seeing that also i was like okay i might get in at least top 5000 or something based on this <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and then the thing is uh, in other apps and all my rank was really bad so when i was in the top 100 in pre pg it was a boost of my confidence because some topics which i had done one and a half month or back or something i still could remember some things and i was in the top 100 so that gave me a lot of confidence that okay even if i have not revised it i still remember something from that subject yes yeah so this is something it's a consistent theme that we hear mm-hmm. that people say that my rank people who do very well in examination in the final examination they actually come and say that my rank in these other apps and most most likely marrow grand tests i think they mm-hmm. they say that our, my performance was so bad that for several days my confidence went down mm-hmm. it's it's good to keep taking different test series but those those are just designed i think they are designed for toppers yeah. then by toppers i mean top 20 you are also a topper <laughs> you've got yeah. such a, you've got to aim steadily Anyway that's that's great uh, is there any message other message you would use leave for uh, the doctors who are preparing yeah i think uh, you should believe in yourself believe in your strategy and be confident about yourself don't get bogged down by so many different opinions that is you know flying through i think you know developing your strategy and following it through will get you where you want to be 
That's great. Thank you so much, Dr. Kavya. This was a, a fun interview, and I, I think there is so much people can learn from you okay. from here. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.